In 2000, Congress responded. Under the leadership of former Senator Sam Brownback and Representative Chris Smith, whom you'll hear from shortly, Congress passed the monumental bipartisan Trafficking Victims Protection Act. This landmark piece of legislation changed the landscape of the conversation around human trafficking and elevated the U.S. government's capabilities to combat this evil. The TVPA created a number of protections for victims, ensuring that they had access to necessary services. It also sharpened prosecution capabilities, criminalizing a broader scope of human trafficking-related crimes and requiring convicted traffickers to provide full restitution to their victims. The TVPA enhanced prevention efforts as well, creating for the first time in U.S. history an office to monitor and combat trafficking in persons within the State Department. The TIP office, currently led by Ambassador-at-Large John Richmond, is tasked with producing the annual Trafficking in Person report that serves as our key diplomatic tool to engage foreign governments on tackling this issue collectively. It goes without saying that the guests in this room at the TVPA ushered in a new era in anti-trafficking work. Over the past 20 years, this legislation has shaped how our country pursues justice for victims, holds traffickers accountable, and prevents further cases of trafficking. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so very much, and thank you for so faithfully implementing the law and doing above and beyond uh, what was even articulated in the statute and statutes that followed. You know, in, in, I've been in Congress now 40 years, and in 1982, I introduced my first anti-trafficking resolution targeted at the Soviet Union. Uh, the use of gulag labor there was horrific. Commissioner Ron Robb, who was then the Customs Commissioner, uh, had a number of products that he wanted to put an import ban on. Uh, so I did a resolution that passed uh, in the House. Uh, a few years later, Frank Wolf and I went to Perm Camp 35, the infamous gulag where such great people like Dayton Sharansky had spent so many years of their life. But again, the gulag system was all over the Soviet Union and exporting of those products was occurring. A couple years later, after Tiananmen Square, Frank Wolf and I again went to a prison camp in China and saw 40 Tiananmen Square activists under the false banner of reform through labor, forced labor, uh, be making goods that came to our markets, including jelly shoes, which were very popular then, socks. We came back with samples, got an import ban on that. A couple of years later, uh, in 1996, I introduced comprehensive legislation on child labor. Uh, and unfortunately, it had the same template that we put into the TVVA, and that is name names, and then uh, sanction those countries that either do not enforce the law or if they don't have a law at all on child labor. I had Kathy Lee Gifford testify at one of the hearings. She had products in Central America uh, that were unfortunately the result of child labor being sold in our stores. Next, two years later, we got the, the bill passed in the House, failed in the Senate, never took it up. Uh, great people like Michael Horowitz came into my office. We had great meetings. What an advocate he is and was uh, for human trafficking. Uh, my staffers, uh, uh, David Abramowitz on the Democrat side, and uh, Joseph Reese, who uh, was our first ambassador uh, to East Timor. Uh, we worked on legislation to finally say, enough. We're going to combat trafficking here, overseas. We will also make it a whole of government so nobody is excluded in the government uh, and have real penalties up to life imprisonment for anybody who exploits uh, a child and anybody through forced fraud or coercion uh, harbors, uh, hurts a woman or a man. But sex trafficking is obviously uh, one of the major focuses. As Kalitza said so, are, so well, you know, there are about 5 million women uh, and mostly women and children who are sex trafficked about 20 million, according to the ILO, who are trafficked uh, uh, because of, of labor. And of course, there's an intermingling so very often. Uh, but the legislation was very hard to get passed. The previous administration then uh, did not want the TIP report, which you do great work in putting together so that the three Ps, the narrative on each and every country, says how they're doing on prevention, prosecution, and protection, with a set of recommendations <laughs> that follow as well. Um, they said, just put it into the human rights report, the country reports on human rights practices, would have, would have, which would have been a step. We said, absolutely not. My friend over here, 
uh, Sam Brownback, <laughs> took the bill up on the Senate side, his own bill, and we, we did a merge purge at the end. Uh, but it was, it was against serious odds. That administration did not want to have sanctions. Sanctions are embedded in the bill, as you know so well. It covers everything, uh, and it's making a difference. There were times when the TIP report was less than stellar, 2015 in particular, uh, but you have done a magnificent job. It is the gold standard, and I know for a fact, because you do as well, we, we meet with delegations all the time. They don't want to be on Tier 3. They don't want to be shamed uh, for their egregious complicity in human trafficking, sex or labor, uh, and they want to be above that. Plus, there's a sanctions piece. So I want to thank you again for what you have done. There's so much more to be done. Finally, government, government, government to the NGOs, and the NGOs have been indispensable in all of this. Calista, uh, uh, Secretary, or I should say Ambassador uh, Gingrich, thank you uh, for the faith-based emphasis you have made, because that, I think, is indispensable uh, to ending this terrible plague. And We've had Delta Airlines testify at hearings. We've had what, they're doing a tremendous job. But the private partnership now, you know, I had just yesterday, uh, Deb, who was here, uh, she did a tremendous work, it is doing a tremendous work, as is Homeland Security, on training people to be situationally aware. Uh, R.W. Uh, um, um, Barnabas and uh, uh, Hackensack uh, Meridian, two large networks in my state, are training their healthcare workers. And we know from the 2014 Laura Letterer study, and I'll finish on this, uh, they've, they've made it very clear that 90% of all the victims of sex trafficking go to a healthcare facility. 63% go to an emergency room. So if you have healthcare professionals who are situationally aware, and we need to share this as you are with other overseas uh, partners as well, there is a point of contact for victim identification, God willing intervention, and then on to the road to recovery. So thank you. Thank you, thank you for your, your passion about this. Thank you for using the TIP report and your engagement oh, you. and with other countries. I hear as I travel, um, other countries talking about the importance when members of Congress raise this on their congressional outreach to other countries. So I'm grateful for that. Um, and you might uh, be uh, encouraged to know there are original members of the Trafficking in Persons Office here today that opened uh, the office when it first started based on the act. Um, and as you mentioned, I know that uh, you had allies in the Senate. Um, and Ambassador Brownback, you are certainly one of those as you uh, brought this bill forward on the Senate side. 